what if you get hit and you still have changes in those brain cells, but for some reason, you don't have any symptoms or you don't think there's anything new or what if you don't want to tell people that you're having symptoms because you're afraid you're going to get kicked off the team or you're not going to be able to be, you know, a starter and you don't want to, you know, come across as not being macho. Well, then if you don't talk about how you feel, then you're not going to get the diagnosis. But there are times when you really don't have the symptoms, but the brain has still been jolted. And when that happens, we refer to it as a subconcussive impact, meaning the cells getting hurt, the brain's hurt the same way as a concussion, but it doesn't result in the symptoms of concussion. And those subconcussive hits happen much, much more often than concussions. I often like to use that analogy of the tip of the iceberg. So at the very tip of the iceberg, you have the big traumatic brain injuries, the moderate to severe traumatic brain injuries, where there's loss of consciousness, there's a coma, there's major problems afterwards. That's the very tip. Concussions are kind of on the surface. They're the things that you can see because the person has symptoms. And it's what people have been talking about. It's what, you know, it's on everyone's mind. It's all, you know, over the, the water cooler discussion. And it's because we see it. They occur after a bigger hit, let's say, and then the person's wobbly or they have difficulties afterwards. That's the concussion, but that's just on the surface. Imagine that big iceberg under the water filled with all of those other hits that take place in many activities over and over and over again, where the brain's moving rapidly, but the person might not have any symptoms. And it's those sub-concussive hits that we're really concerned about that can result in the beginning of this disease of CTE.